listen, it's the message right here. Black boy, tell me how you really feel. Cause I just wanna build with you. Black girl, tell me how you really feel. I wanna keep it real with you. I wanna live better, eat better. I wanna love better, sleep better. Yeah, I wanna feel so aligned. So a while back, I made a video called Hashtag Relationship Goals. What, what did I call it? Oh, Hashtag Relationship Goals is Toxic. That was the name of the video. And I talked about how it's, uh, I talked about how it's toxic, but I went down the list of the reasons why I think it's toxic. But anyway, the question is, um, why do y'all think romance slash relationship goals slash me and somebody's son slash Hollywood is love? Especially nowadays, you log on Instagram, you see this person and that person taking trips. You see this person and that person taking the cute pictures where you're like, who the fuck is the photographer? You know what I'm saying? Like they be in the bathtub together and it's like, like who took the picture? Right? Mm -hmm. um, and like, especially me and somebody's son, like, why do y'all think that is what love looks like? Have you stopped to ask yourself, like, did we have a real example of love growing up? Maybe that's the first visual of love we have, someone taking us on these trips, me and somebody's son, um, a celebrity power couple who's successful. And like for me, I feel like the outside of my grandparents, the first successful relationship I saw was of my friend's parents. And by then I was in high school. So if that's for me, and I feel like I had a pretty decent life growing up, if that's the life, if that's the vision for me, that's the first time I saw real love. Imagine someone who had to struggle through life. They may not have seen real love until, the, until they got to social media. So that is what they base their future love off of. Um, and even now, like I said, I love me some me and somebody's sons. I don't know, I feel like someone investing their time and investing their money in me is it's almost like it's proof that you really want to be with me. Why do you think so many guys dislike it? I'll be honest here, <laughs> don't be mad at me. I feel like men don't like it. I feel like some men don't like it because they are not where they want to be in life um, as far as really financially. So they know if their girl is on the relationship goals hashtag or following the celebrity, the hot celebrity couple at the moment, or reposting the me and somebody's son, I can't afford to take my girl to him. Like, I can't afford to do that. So I already have a vendetta against them. Like, that's the enemy. I think, uh, I think that's tough because Because of social media, because of Hollywood, because of me and somebody's son, I think we've created a lot of unrealistic expectations for men and women. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, speaking as a guy, the reason a lot of guys, including myself, are annoyed by it is because it creates not just an unrealistic aesthetic, but also an unsustainable aesthetic. Because it's like, Part of the reason you fell in love with me is because I'm a teacher and I'm investing my time in the youth, in the youth program. I make $50,000 a year. We can't do the same shit as Miguel and his girl. Right. But if you keep holding me to that standard, I'm gonna come home 
three nights out of the week, you're going to be upset for no reason. And you might not even know you're upset because you're comparing me subconsciously to this image of what a relationship or what love is supposed to look like. I think that's the reason most men are, are, are annoyed by it because it's like we, we can't win for losing. I appreciate your response, but you asked me. But I do agree that they are unrealistic expectations. And I do feel that me harping on those unrealistic expectations has caused issues in relationships, not so much like boyfriend, girlfriend relationship all the time, but relationships in the past. I can agree with that part. So the next question kind of builds on that. And this is, this is a very black question. And it's a question that a lot of um, black men discuss and talk about. And I think um, people like Kevin Samuels are bringing, uh, putting a spotlight on it, right? So one of the issues that we have, you know, when people say, oh, black men and black women can't understand each other and need to communicate better. Part, part of the problem from the male point of view is, like I just mentioned, it seems like our women are unpleasable sometimes, right? Can't be satisfied. Can't be satisfied. If you're a nigga who makes a lot of money, she's upset that you don't have time. If you're a nigga who has a lot of time, she's upset that you don't make a lot of money. If, you, if you're a nigga who's, you know what I'm saying, handsome, she's upset that all these women want you. If you're a nigga who's ugly, she's upset that nobody wants you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So it's like you can't wait for losing. So the question is, um, why do you, not you, but you, the bigger you, have such pseudo-masculine expectations of black men. And that involves like the whole big dick, six figures, six foot. Uh, some, some women are like, he gotta run a four or five even. Like they're specific to how fast a nigga run. Um, thug slash intellectual slash eclectic slash this slash that. Like why do y'all think it's okay <laughs> to project those expectations on us. I think it's the same reason why men project the expectation of BBL, red bone, long hair don't care, zero kids her own business, Instagram model. I think there's a correlation there. You want the best of the best, or I can't want the best of the best. I think we both have unrealistic expectations for each other. Now this one, you can speak for yourself, you can speak for your homegirls, line sisters, ex friends, whatever. <clears throat> I think one of my homeboys sent me this actually. Why are y'all in such a rush to get married? For me, my rush to get married was because I wanted to feel like I was valued. Um and I didn't realize that until I got older that it wasn't really much of I wanted a guy or I wanted a man. I wanted to feel like I was valuable to someone else. So I kind of pressured relationships. Um, even at like 21, 22, I was already planning to get married by 25 and have my kids by 27. Here I am 27 with none of that. And Honestly, had I had any of that, I would have been like, out of my mind, like what to do. Um, I do feel that some people feel the pressure of society 
which at one point I did feel that as well. And I kind of snapped out of it when I realized the people that were pressuring me to get married or find a boyfriend or get a man were people who were not married. 50 and up and not married or not happily married. And so I had to ask myself, like, why am I trying to rush into something they rushed into when they're not happy? Um, Then there was a point in my life where a close friend of mine got married and I was like, dang, am I behind? I don't know, just it took some time. It took some maturity to realize I didn't have to rush that process like I could take my time and enjoy being single and enjoy dating to really get to know what I wanted. Damn, that's gold. That's gold and that's real. Why don't y'all believe us when we say we're not ready? I don't know, we believe you. We just say we can make you ready. (laughs) I believe when a a guy tells me they're not ready and I can see the ways in which they are not ready. However, I don't know, for a woman in life, there's so many things that you kind of have to make happen. And that's one of the things where we feel like, well, if I can make this happen, I can make that happen as well. So we believe you. But we feel that we can change you. Most of us feel that we can change you. I'm not looking to change nobody else no time soon (laughs) now.